Well, let's move on and uh, stay in the region and talk about Cuba, where uh, Biden, with the heavy hand of his sanctions coming down, uh, looks more like Donald Trump than Barack Obama, and uh, announced new sanctions on, I I believe, a police force in uh, Cuba. So what's happening, and then what does this say about Biden's Cuba policy? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I know we've uh, we definitely covered. I know the big round of protests in Cuba a couple weeks ago over just like some basic things, shortages of goods, the government's response to the pandemic, and all this. Uh, we also, I know, hit on some of like the bad media coverage that followed that. But um, at that point, I don't think the Biden administration had actually taken any action in relation to the protests. But that has now changed over these last couple weeks because we've had actually several layers of new sanctions now imposed on Cuba. Um, the latest came last Friday that you just mentioned. Uh, the Treasury Department announced sanctions on the uh, what they call the Cuban National Revolutionary Police Force, and it's like two top officials, uh, the director, Oscar Calejas, and his deputy, uh, Eddie Sierra. And uh, I admittedly don't know a whole lot about these two guys, but the they are being accused of helping to crack down on and sort of suppress these protests. And I think that includes like sort of going around uh, afterward and rounding people up. Um, and I'm not I'm not really sure to what extent that is happening, but there's definitely been reports of like arbitrary detentions and people being disappeared and all that kind of stuff. And I guess I don't really doubt that some of that is happening there. Um, and uh, these sanctions were announced just as Biden went to meet with uh, Cuban like exile and uh, diaspora groups. Uh, so that seemed kind of significant. It seemed strategic, sort of like a like just a PR stunt. It did seem like some of this was done for domestic consumption, because um, I don't think these sanctions on these on this police force will have much of a, an effect. Um, uh, they were largely symbolic. I mean, the entire island's already under an embargo. Um, And so I'm not sure these additional sanctions on these two guys or the police force will do much to change the situation on the ground, certainly. Um, However, in that meeting with those Cuban-American groups, Biden also promised that more sanctions would be coming. Um, He didn't give any detail or clarify what that would mean or where they would go, but he did suggest that there will be more penalties. And uh, those would be added not only to those sanctions on the the cops that we just talked about, but um, there's another round of sanctions, too, imposed the week before last on the defense minister, uh, Alvaro Lopez Miera. Um, I think they also hit a special forces unit there, too, called the SNB, that uh, both apparently were involved in repressing the protests. That's what is alleged by Washington. Um, so there's been several layers of sanctions uh, now on Cuba over these uh, these protests or the government's response to them. Um, that's basically what I had there on that. Uh, uh, Biden does seem like he's starting his own sort of little like maximum pressure campaign or some kind of pressure campaign on the Cubans. Uh, we have these two layers of sanctions and apparently more coming. Uh, it's not really clear what he expects to accomplish with these. As I said, this looks like it could be more about the optics than it really is about you know changing anything in Cuba. Uh, like if they really wanted to help the average Cuban, they could lift the blockade that they've kept on there for 60 years. You know, that might actually do something to help people with goods or medicine or prices or, or whatever for the average person. Um, oh, there's one other thing, too. The, the Biden administration has also been talking about how they want to improve Internet access within Cuba somehow. Um, I guess they have some ways they could do that with like private Internet providers because the government there is apparently uh, they're allegedly reportedly shutting things down and sort of messing with the Internet. Uh, but this does seem like another area where they're going to be trying to intervene more. The U.S. administration. And the Cubans, I think, have a pretty good reason to be skeptical about this kind of thing, because people might recall that there was this uh, this social media project back in the 2010s called Zunzunio. It was marketed initially as just like the Cuban version of Twitter, but it it later was revealed that the entire thing was a big covert operation to encourage Cubans to like protest and revolt and have their own. I think at the time it was described as have their own Cuban spring, like the Arab spring. Um, the Associated Press actually had done the, the reporting on this, and they showed that this app was funded by the by USAID, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and they had done this through a bunch of cutout companies to hide their involvement. But sort of the idea was that to start this out as a normal social media platform and slowly introduce more and more political content and political messaging to try to, like, radicalize Cubans. And this is all covered by the AP. And uh, that project was shut down in 2012, but there was another one they launched in 2014 called Pyramidio, that uh, was a similar thing. Uh, it worked through text messaging, but it was the same kind of idea. It was funded through the, a US government agency called the Office of Cuba Broadcasting. And they yeah, tried to send these like anti-communist, anti-Cuban uh, uh, propaganda through text messages to Cubans. So uh, the US government has been trying to manipulate politics in Cuba through the internet and through sort of mass communications for quite a while now. And it seems like Biden is taking another crack at that with all this stuff about uh, you know, expanding internet access.
Right. You know, well, I uh, sometimes see maybe some libertarians who live in fantasy land. Uh, <laughs> you pee uh, and cap is on your head. Uh, no, but th- this fa- fantasy idea about the U.S. government that they would do something like just out of the kindness of their hearts and to help the Cuban people get better Internet access. They would, you know, launch some kind of project. And well, the, you know, there's, there's some libertarians that would, I, I think, be like, that's that's a good thing that you that's something the u.s government should do so what do you think of that well i mean like i I can see where they're coming from just the principle of i don't like communism and so like i guess if we just do some things to help the people but it never ends there i mean like what happens when the cubans do start revolting and the government starts you know uh responding the way that governments typically respond to revolts with force like what is the u.s going to do then certainly it's just a path to more and more and more intervention and that's clearly what they want too it's not like this is sort of like unintended i think that was sort of the idea with that whole zunzunio thing was to create a just a a, a crap storm in cuba to to you know facilitate more u.s intervention to see you know our, our regime change that we want that we've been trying for for a long time there right